News of the Night starts right now on West Dakota Fox News at 9. Good evening, I'm Molly Martinez. The man accused of trying to run over a police officer sparking a multi-state manhunt is under arrest. Today, Ulysses Villalobos entered a courtroom in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, where he's being held on charges of being a fugitive from justice. Officers found him about 10, afters, 10 hours after he was shot in the shoulder by police in Bismarck. He's been charged with attempted murder, simple assault, and fleeing a police officer. Authorities in Brookings, South Dakota, say Villalobos turned himself in last night around 9 o'clock. He was at a gas station bleeding from that gunshot wound. Brookings Police and the Brookings County Sheriff Department both responded. When they arrived, he appeared to have a gunshot wound to his arm. The people at the scene were applying first aid. He was transported by ambulance to a local hospital. Villalobos was later airlifted to a hospital in Sioux Falls. That's where the Minnehaha County Sheriff's arrested him. Authorities say he has waived extradition, meaning he can be brought back to North Dakota. And they say so far they haven't found the car they believe Villalobos was driving after ditching his original getaway car or the man who was with him. Here's a quick recap of how this whole thing started. At 1039 yesterday, Bismarck police were assisting on a parole and probation check in the 3200 block of Montreal Street. That's when the man, Villalobos, took off in a black Equinox. Police say he tried to run over an officer who returned fire, striking Villalobos in the arm. At 1251 p.m., the vehicle was found abandoned on Hillview Avenue. At 5.30, a new suspect vehicle was spotted north on I-29 towards Fargo. And at 9.46 p.m., Bismarck police confirmed that the injured man at the South Dakota gas station was indeed Ulysses Villalobos. The search for Villalobos prompted Bismarck police to request the state's first ever blue alert. That alert sent confusion across the state because the alert itself didn't have much information. The North Dakota National Guard, who actually put out the alert, say it hopes to fix this in the future by having better communication between departments. At the end of the day, we just did not put out a clear enough message. So the process worked as it was designed, uh, but we have to get better at making sure we put out good information so we don't cause folks to be alarmed yes. uh, when there isn't a need to be. Dorman says the reason the alert didn't have enough information was because the system has an 80 character limit. Time now to take our first check on weather with meteorologist Kevin Lawrence. Thank you, Kevin. All right. A man and woman from Minot are facing criminal charges tonight after a narcotic tax force turned up more than 30 grams of methamphetamine. Ward County Task Force officers pulled over 38-year-old Erica Riccio Wednesday. In search, the search of the car revealed a cup in the console with a bag containing drugs inside. Police arrested Riquejo and the passenger, 30-year-old Craig Donahue. Riquejo has also faced charges of driving under suspension. Minot residents are barking back after a city voted 6-1 to one against lifting the ban on pit bulls inside city limits. Just hours after the city vote, a Facebook group of 17 residents formed to organize a petition. They hope it will help repeal the breed-specific language. The group has already started collecting signatures. They need 2,800 names by April 9th to get to the petition on the ballot for the new city council elections this summer. Those dogs have to be removed from mine within 24 hours. What happens if they're not? They can be taken and then eventually they'll be put down. The story's viral. The animal shelter says the pit bulls can stay there until they are adopted, but many dogs sent to the pound are not as lucky. Over in Turtle Lake, the city council will hold a special meeting Friday to talk about renewing their police contract. Commissioner Diane Zenker tells us they received a lot of concern after our story aired on Tuesday. The city terminated its contract with McLean County Sheriff's Department because leaders said they wanted a change. Now, the city is reconsidering. Um, it looks very certain that we will sign it, but until it is absolutely done, I'm not going to say we're going to sign it. Plans for cameras on Main Street and adjacent roads are still on. Speaking of law enforcement, a SWAT team, sheriff's deputies, Mandan police, and state troopers caused quite a commotion today at Mandan Middle School. But the reason might surprise you. Reporter John Salling shows us this covert operation. Happy birthday! Andrew Helvig is a seventh grader that wants to be a law enforcement officer when he grows up. Happy birthday! They do good, they get the bad guys. And it's just uh, really good to have a nice area where we live.
For career week in November, Andrew dressed up as a member of SWAT, but since then, part of his costume went missing. I came in with an idea is um, maybe surprise him for his birthday here in January with a visit from the actual SWAT team and give him a chance to uh, maybe experience what his dream might be like when it comes true. The idea snowballed from there. Mandan's SWAT team brought a Bearcat vehicle down. The event also grew to include canine units, state troopers, city police, and Morton County deputies. You got to see like all the different things that they use. Um, there's a thing that they break down the doors with. It was really heavy. And yeah, I just I got to pet a dog. Uh, it was, that was actually really awesome. Andrew says it was a birthday he'll never forget. For West Dakota Fox News at 9, I'm John Salling. Also in school news, Walker Middle School's PE teacher Sheila Peterson was in for quite a surprise today. N.D. Shape just named her Middle School Teacher of the Year. The 17-year veteran accepted the award humbly. Um, I don't really feel like I'm deserving of it just because I've been in many sessions and watched really great teachers. And so... Um, I'm actually kind of very surprised by this, but uh, very thankful. It's really nice to be recognized. This isn't the first award for Peterson. She won Wachter Middle School Teacher of the Year in 2013. In health news, the nation is facing a shortage of IV bags. Here in Bismarck, some hospitals are feeling the pinch more than others. Dr. Chris Meeker of Sanford says they haven't been hurt by the shortage as much because they're able to move supplies between hospitals. Sanford's main supplier is not the Puerto Rico factory that was damaged in Hurricane Maria. Dr. Meeker feels they dodged a major hit, but still had to accommodate for the shortage they are feeling now. They've been very active in looking at other um, vendors that supply uh, fluids, and so um, we have uh, more than one. We have the primary one, uh, but we've also been able to uh, arrange contracts with others as well. The factory in Puerto Rico is back online, and the Department of Health says relief should be coming by the end of the month. St. Alexia's and Dickinson is restricting visitors to all units in their hospital. In a statement released today, the hospital said the increased flu activity is to blame. Kids will now not be allowed in patient rooms. People can only visit immediate family. All visitors must wear a mask, and they say don't visit patients if you are sick. The restrictions go into effect immediately and will stay in place until the flu season activity returns to normal. Thriftikables is a new thrift store in Old Red Trail in Mandan, and Karma Vida is a new wellness center in Bismarck. Maddie Jelseth has this week's Main Street Minute. Welcome back. L'Oreal Paris' new hair campaign features a woman wearing a hijab. Amina Khan is the first hijab wearing model to star in a commercial for the mainstream brand. The internet influencer hopes to challenge the assumption that people who wear hijabs don't take care of their hair. Well, a pair of unlikely best friends to tell you about tonight. This video from the Zoological Wildlife Foundation shows Bruno, an American Mastiff, and his chimp friend. The officials say the two are inseparable. And some wild video to show you tonight out of Turkey. Dust storms are turning the skies an eerie yellow color. Strong winds carried the dust from Syria and Iraq. The dust was so thick, some flights had to be canceled due to poor visibility. They got dust over there, Kevin. We have black ice over here. Hmm. You know what? What's worse, a lot of dust like that or reduced visibility and blowing snow? I, I think the snow might be a little bit better than that. All right, look at these temperatures right now. It's mild here on this January evening, 37 degrees in Bismarck. Some of us not even below freezing at this hour. That is impressive. Look at these temps for tomorrow. We're back above freezing, barely in Minot, but 36 degrees in Williston, sunshine, a few clouds in Bismarck, and 38. Quick check of the seven day one more time here. And again, we're looking pretty good, Molly. This is uh, more like a March pattern and maybe a little bit of snow Friday. This That's a whole a, week away. This is a warm weekend. Thank oh, you, Kevin. Nice. Yeah. Everyone, send Kevin a thank you card. Yeah, thank we'll, you. We'll and cookies on, and donuts. <laughs> we'll see you on Monday. <laughs>